Hey, we're back at it again on the Elder Scrolls. Looks like we're heading into this solo instance. Let's see what we do. Ew. Your soul, Dosha. Don't fail me. Mulak Bal. Kill the dosha. Hide your backpack on me. <laughs> Listen, dosha. <clears throat> We're gonna have a problem here. You're too late, mortal. His soul will feel the mortal vividness. Oh, I will get you it. as well. Uh -huh, you true form. Had me. Thank you, comrade. You all right? Just need a moment to recover. If you hadn't come along, I'll be fine. Stand our willing. Oh, she on about wanting your I soul. I heard her communing with the Lord of Lies. Molog Ball is harvesting souls for some dark plot. He's especially interested in the souls of the faithful. Mm, I don't know comrade, about that. Grab that book and her notes on the table. I saw her scribbling after speaking to her master. We may be able to learn more about this plot. Learn what this Mortum Vivicus is. Grab them, then let's get out of here. All right. The book I just read. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's the Dosha's journal. Sorry. Okay. That's a different book. Wait for me! Wait, Merrick. Don't want to be alone in here. Hmm, everybody's waiting outside. You are the sun on my scales, comrade. You've returned Merrick to us. He was captured by a necromancer. Follower of Molag Bal. Molag Bal. May he burn in the glare of a thousand suns. It's just like him to send an assassin to kill a It's always warrior. funny how these people like, treat these Daedra like they're nothing. They could just wipe out humanity if they wanted. Sooth, the Mortum. What? And I can't make tales or scales of these scribblings. No matter. It's going to take time to decipher this scroll, but we'll put our best scribe on it. Anything else I can do? You've done a great service for the guild today, comrade. I look forward to drawing steel go. with you in the future. If we learn anything from the journal, I'll make sure you hear about it. I'll look for you down the river, comrade. You'll hear from us once we've decoded the journal. Of course. After action report, yes? Wise choice. Not long. Aleph told me you found some trinkets with the cultists. The 
between those baubles and the notes you found. Hopefully, we'll have a start for the translation effort. Chuck a good -g -g ghost. Yafnir. His passage down the river called me to this post. What did he say? Interesting. I'll get in touch with some <coughs> of our sisters in the Mage's Guild. See if they can investigate this apparition. I try to avoid the Walking Dead when I can. Who doesn't? Guess it won't really matter. Let's see, which one do I have the least amount of? Dwarven Earls? on that one. Except my boat went up. Nothing in that one. Yeah, I'm not wearing any light armor. What do we got here? Increases your resistance. Health recovery. And max health. unlock these <coughs> which that's only for the uh, PvP area nothing there okay alrighty next travel to the harborage vestige we'll go to our house oh, we'll go to the outside And we can pick up our mount <laughs> upgrade while we're there. Who wouldn't want such a cozy little home? All right, fine. I'll pick up your quest. You have a look. Yeah. All right. Oh, sure. I, mean, I know. I shouldn't just zip through Hope for the you room guys, is to your liking. With your I've reputation, already kind of done this one. No, just make yourself at home. Spruce things up? Oh, what a relief. Just so I don't have to keep listening to her every time I walk in there. Yeah, see, still quite a bit of people hanging out in this area. Yeah, what do we got here? I need to talk to Welcome, you. Welcome, friend. And what shall we get? We'll get another stamina. Okay. In your own homeland. Right, so we're go to the Hobridge. This man does not know, but he hopes his family is safe in the Vestige. Yeah, I thought about it. I should have been making these videos years ago. Just never really put much thought into it so I'm kind of late in the game so to speak but you know it's it's all about having fun doing doing what you enjoy and yeah so I hope you I hope everybody's enjoying the videos as well Come on, profit. Show me the money. Well, we're waiting. <laughs> sure is taking a while. Come on, 
dude. Man, this sure is taking a minute to load up the harborage here. Well, what shall we talk about? Really? Wow. Okay, I'm surprised. I didn't expect it to take this long. didn't work. Hmm. Man, I've never had it take this long to load. Something's going on. I hope I didn't get disconnected. Tell you what, I need to get uh, some more New Vegas videos. I'm getting closer to the date of the TV show. Is it really called a TV show? Because it's not really on TV anymore. I mean, everybody has televisions, but you could watch them anywhere. You know, like you watch them on your phone, computer, console. Well, console's connected to a television, or at least something like that. Maybe a monitor or whatnot, whatever it may be. But it was like, you know, back when I was a youngin', like you had to have a television to watch TV shows. <laughs> Sounds goofy to say it that way, but that's the way it was. So it's like, is it really this? Is it considered the same thing now? And for normal terms, yeah, you could say a television show. But I always thought it would have been cool if, uh, like, well, how was I thinking it? Okay, like most of you probably may not know about like all you had to do was buy a television set and you could watch your programs for free you just needed an antenna to pick up the signal so they never charged you to watch a program and then somewhere in the early 80s uh, cable television came out so then they had this this company would Pick, have broadcasts of uh, shows come into them and then you had to pay to watch it. Now the advantage of it was is you could watch like HBO and Cinemax and those types of uh, stations but uh, originally as long as you paid so much a month you got all those channels. Well then what happened somewhere along the way, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but basically, like HBO, Cinemax, you had to start paying for those channels. Those were like premium channels because they never had uh, like ads like you would see on regular t TV, you know, for cars and food and all the other commodities out there in the world. And you would only see ads for things that were on their station. So you might get a preview of another movie or whatever. Or whatever show they were promoting at that time. And, uh, so it was like, you didn't have to, uh, see all those extra ads. And, so then it was like, so you're paying, you know, let's say 15 bucks a month for your cable bill, and now you're paying another $5 a month per channel. Sometimes you might get a bundle or whatever, but, anywho, 
so you would do that kind of stuff and then man this is taking a while sorry uh so you would do all that and then it was just like i'd always be at school <clears throat> and people would be talking about shows i wasn't watching because i'm like i don't have that surface and they're like oh man you did that and but eventually i remember my parents uh they had gotten uh a satellite now i'm not talking like a little dish network i'm talking like a 20 foot like satellite or something i mean it was pretty big i don't remember if it was 20 foot but i'm just like it was massive and back then all you needed was the equipment and you could pick up the channels for free so you just bought the equipment it was the same idea as cable television but now you had access to everything again and for the longest time that was a thing and then eventually they followed the same suit as excuse me they had followed the same suit as the cable channels and they started charging you so it was like you know here you are you're you could watch stuff from anywhere as long as you pick up the satellite so what you'd have this box sitting in there and uh, it'd have like this dial on it so you'd actually turn the satellite to the you'd turn the dish to the satellite that you wanted to watch off of so it was like you get this big uh, guide that would tell you the number of this and like what number to put in to dial to to pick up whatever satellite you wanted and I'm like man could you imagine that today like if you moved your satellite instead of it just being stationary and you're dependent on like you know DirecTV or whatever company it might be you're you're dependent on them all right I don't understand what's going on here why is this not uh, I may have to end the video and figure out what's going on and then start another one so I'll give it another minute and then we may have to end it and then start over again and I apologize so I was like yeah like we had that and then uh, somewhere along the way like it just turned into this new thing with like a, I think was it Prime Star I think was one of the first ones I had uh, and then eventually Prime Star disappeared. I think it merged in with DirecTV because I think it was Prime Star DirecTV and, and a couple other you know companies out there doing it. Eventually Prime Star merged in DirecTV. I think bought them or something. So you had DirecTV and what was the uh, Dish Network is like another one that's was kind of big uh, later on. Those were like two competing ones, and it was like okay, let's. F I mean, it sounded cool in the beginning of. You know, oh man, I could watch all these channels. Because, you know, like back when I was a kid, I think maybe we, we might have had five or six channels, maybe at most, before cable. And I lived in the city, so it was like, you know, you, you could pick up a lot more. We eventually, we ended up moving out to the country, and we only got like maybe two or three stations if we were lucky. And, you, you know, we were where my parents' house was. It was like, way down in a valley almost like we were downhill so it's like really hard to get a channels to watch and uh you still where we lived you had to have the old tv sets to pick up the antennas you know so you we had to have that and just watching the emergence of how television evolved through my years of experience it was like you know i was born in the 70s so i'm like you know, television back then. Television had, had only majorly been around for maybe when they st when did they start actually like becoming more popular? Probably around in the 40s, the 50s era. Like prior to that, they had television, but it was like you had to be rich to own a television. And even when they started coming out to the public, it was like you had one television sitting in the living room. That's where everybody watched TV, kind of thing. And then eventually it became cheap enough where I had a TV in my own room, and I could watch what I wanted to, so I didn't have to always watch what my parents watched at that point. But, yeah, it's just...
Crazy times. Well, all right. I gave it a couple minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and end. I'm going to try to get this restarted, and then we'll try it again. All right. Thank you.